So, what are we looking at? The city of Manhattan on a series of hexes. There are eight characters in Mr. Jack in New York, and each of them have a unique special ability that when chosen, the player can activate. So let's have a closer look. We have the gas lamps. Gas lamps will illuminate any players in the surrounding hexes, and will play an important role in the overall game. The gas lamps are controlled by Lewis Latimer's special ability. He will install a new gas lamp on an empty street hex when he's activated. The investigation tiles will block access to the hexes they cross over. These tiles can be moved by James H. Callahan. The metro entrance hexes, which characters will be able to enter and resurface at throughout the game. They're controlled by Alfred Eli Beach, who has the ability to place new metro entrances on empty street hexes. Building spaces and building sites. These hexes cannot be passed through by characters. Except for Cloud Rider who can pass through building hexes at no cost to movement. Cloud Rider will also place a new building site tile on an empty street hex when activated. Emma Grant's ability is to create a park space. The gas lamp, building site and metro tiles that are placed by the previously mentioned characters are all double sided. The opposite side contains a park space. Emma Grant will allow a player to switch a selected tile to its park side as demonstrated here. What is special about park spaces? Here's an example. Let's say Cloud Rider the red character was in a park space here. At the end of the round when the player calls for a witness, all three characters here would normally witness each other as they are all next to one another. When a character is in a park space, you can neither see in or out of the space, therefore Cloud Rider would have no witness. But the white and green characters here would still witness each other. There are also in New York two transatlantic steamer tiles that Jack will try and escape to. Edward Smith's ability will allow you to move one of these boats to one of the five ports. I will also make mention that there is one street hex that Jack can also attempt to flee Manhattan from. The other characters are Francis Tumblety. His ability works when he's next to another character. So if Francis were to move to this hex, he would be next to the two highlighted characters, of which he'd be able to select one of the two, and select another character, and switch them. When the call for a witness is made, any character in a hex next to a gas lamp, or next to another character, excluding those in parks, will have a witness. So currently, these characters have witnesses. These two don't have a witness. The last character is Monk Eastman, who will be able to move another character in the same status he is. So, currently with no witness, he would be able to move Francis, the only other character in his same status. He'd be able to move Francis one to three hexes instead of moving himself. Okay, starting the game. The player playing Jack will draw an alibi card, of which there is one for each character. He draws Monk Eastman. Monk Eastman is now the only character without an alibi, therefore is Mr. Jack. The player playing Jack will hold on to this card throughout the game. Players will be able to throughout the game visit an informant who starts on Liberty Island. To get to the informant, a player will make use of the Keyside spaces. This will allow a player to get to Liberty Island. The informant can only be used once per turn. Once used, you turn the informant to his silent side and draw an alibi card. You now know that the character's card you have drawn from the alibi deck is not Mr. Jack. You now take the place of the informant and can select a valid space anywhere in Manhattan to place the informant. He will become active again the next turn. Turn order is the same as the original but different to most other games. Four character cards are drawn. The detective player on the odd numbered turns will play one, moving in or executing actions. Then Jack will play two, one after the other, and the detective player will play the last one. On the even numbered turns, Jack will start. After the four characters have been played, the detective then asks Jack is there a witness to Mr. Jack. The highlighted characters currently have witnesses. Mr. Jack, aka Monk Eastman, is not one of them. The player playing Jack then replies no, there is no witness, and places the witness card on the appropriate side. 
the detective player can now rule out the other characters from his investigation by turning the character tokens over. It is then Jack's turn to start with the other four characters previously not played. Whilst people new to Mr Jack may think the turn order is hard to keep track of, the game is only played over eight turns and there is a handy track and counter that will help you keep track of the turn number and also the order of which players select characters. This animation is to coincide with a future review to be done by Duff and Castelli. This animation will have links to that review once it is completed.